Hey, g'day people, it's Matt here from Matt Carve. So today we are going to carve this. It is a dragon on a piece of board, commonly referred to as a relief carving. Now there's heaps of different types of relief carving, so I'm going to go quickly through that. But first of all, I'm just going to say that I'm going to sort of like divide this up into chapters. And here are the chapters here. So if you need to go back and have a look at those chapters, to refresh on those just go back to those firstly though i'm going to have a look at just a general look at relief carvings and how difficult each type is so first of all the easiest type of relief carving is sort of this one down here okay so this is one of the simplest kind of uh relief carvings you could do it's almost like well it's engraving really and really you're just following a line and you want to make sure the sort of like carving is sort of like a profile of something that makes it a lot easier so just a complete side profile or a top profile like as in that bird there or the eagle if you want to call it that you see and then you start getting a little bit more difficult when you add the three-dimensional fact into it so this is has a little bit more um sort of like contours to it i guess the wood's going in so the teeth start to stick out a little bit but you sort of see here, it's not a profile really because you have this part of the mouth and then behind that there's that part of the mouth. So then you've got to start thinking about what lies behind each other thing. Um, what other kind of carvings you can do? You can do really nice kind of ones like these. These are profiles. Just sort of like carve the back on these. Now, I've done videos on all of these ones that I've shown you, showing you today. And you can sort of like look in the description and I will have a few playlists for you. Um, yeah, I really like these smaller ones. You can sort of, you can really learn a lot by doing these relief carvings on control of your Dremel and all that. Really great place to start when you're a beginner. Sort of start on the real easy ones and sort of progress maybe to a leaf. And then you can sort of start doing maybe your more Celtic designs and all of that. And when you sort of like, you can also do a dust brush like this. This is pretty cool. Um, and this is really crappy wood. It's uh, terrible wood to carve. But you can sort of see you can carve any kind of woods. And uh, this is really complex, this one. This is uh, one that I did a while ago. I think I showed bits of it on the internet. Well, on the YouTube. Uh, but you can sort of see things are starting to get pretty complex there as things go under and over and all of that kind of stuff. So um, I wouldn't attempt something like this to start off with. Okay, so what type of wood do you want to carve in? Well, I would, if you can get, your, get hold of mahogany, that is probably the best wood you can sort of get. Well, this, I'm not saying the best wood, but it's a nice wood to carve. Okay, so, um, and woods are all, always personal preference. So, um, and this is actually an uh, armchair, so like the, the arm of an armchair. So, and it looked really bad to start off with. My friend found it on the side of the road and gave it to me and I carved this on it for one of his exhibitions. So um, that was quite fun to do. Now this wood here, you can sort of see it's quite soft. I can kind of leave a dent in with your fingernail. So good for beginners. This is a wood from Fiji. I can't pronounce it though, but here is the name of it. And what you're kind of looking for is kind of like a softer wood that um, doesn't have a lot of grain in, I guess you would say. Um, you can carve in pine. Um, pine's a little bit funny because there's good pine and bad pine. I can't really tell the difference until you start carving it. Um, that's why how I sort of like tell what I'm going to carve and if it's good I'll just start carving it and if it's really bad I probably will give up on it so um, I think I carved that out of Jara which is very hard wood that's an Australian wood you can carve it in hardwoods as well and it holds more detail I think all of these ones on this table is pine really um, was really fuzzy but you sort of work around it but with mahogany um, if you want to find mahogany it's very hard to buy or it's very expensive to buy 
but you can get them from like well I'm going to talk about New Zealand in New Zealand there were a lot of headboards made out of mahogany and a lot of furniture that was made out of mahogany and mahogany kind of went out of fashion that dark wood went out of fashion and sort of was replaced with other things and you can buy them at second hand stores you might pick up a, like a headboard for like I don't know 10 bucks or something like that which is pretty good just watch out for uh, headboards that look like mahogany but aren't mahogany they're just a veneer um, what you're looking for is a wood that kind of looks like this it's uh, that's a nice piece of mahogany a little bit dusty I guess but it's kind of like brown it doesn't have a lot of um, doesn't have a lot of grain but you can sort of see there's a light it's a little bit got a kind of flex in there don't worry too much about that and it's got that real nice color to it so yeah just look out in second hand stores you know I can't talk for America or wherever you are mahogany might not have been in style there I don't know uh, this was when I was growing up so a very long time ago but you can still pick up those headboards from second hand stores Okay, so when it comes to putting your pattern on the wood, you want to take a little bit of time so you can sort of figure out where it's going to go on the wood. We could sort of like look at it like that. But what I'm noticing here is I'm probably thinking um, the piece of paper is actually a little bit off. And this you want to kind of look at where the center line probably is. And it's kind of about there. So you kind of look at it like that. So what might be a good idea is just to cut out this and so we have a better look at how this will work on this piece of wood. So now we have kind of a, like a, a better perception on how that's actually going to sit on the wood. So before it was sort of like sitting like that but maybe we need it up a little bit like this. Looks like a number eight actually. But I think it'll look pretty cool. So I quite like it there. You want to kind of hold it up like that and look at it. Maybe a piece up here just to stabilize it a little bit more. So we can sort of like put it up like that. Right and so what we do now is we put the carbon paper under it and then go over the actual drawing. Okay, so you just put your carbon paper under. Now it's shiny side down. This uh, carbon paper has actually been used quite a bit, so it doesn't really leave a great kind of um, line under there. But it's good enough for us. Ooh, it's not really working out. I'll just take that up a bit. Okay, so essentially, we, I'm not going to go over all those scales because I tend to just do the scales by freehand when I get to that point. But I'll go through all the lines and all of that around here. Now I just go over with a red pen so I can sort of like tell where I've been. You can go over with a black pen if you wanted to. It's just a bit harder to tell where you've been. Okay, so I've gone over all the lines and now I tend to just have a quick look to make sure I have got everything uh, pretty much there. Yeah, so that's looking good. And just have a look how it sits on there as well. I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so the next part is sort of like taking the background back. And there's several ways of doing this, like I said before. Um, with this one, because there's quite a lot of uh, wood here to remove if we took all of it back. Say, like check out this eagle here. See how I've taken all of the background back. So it's at a different plane and the eagle is sticking out. Much like this leaf here, it's the same deal. So that wasn't too bad because, it, yeah, there wasn't too much of it to take back. And also you've got to consider like how hard your wood is as well. If your wood's really hard, you don't really want to like spend a whole day taking all of this back. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in sort of here well, we're going to go around the outside first and then sort of like taper it out like that. Actually, much like this dragon here, sort of sitting on this table, it's kind of flat like that profile. But you can sort of see that bit goes in. Okay, so here's a close-up of the dragon. You can sort of see the table here. And then it actually goes down into the dragon there. 
So what we're doing is we're only carving this little bit here out into sort of like a sort of like a curved downwards kind of area. So when it comes to actually choosing the burrs to carve each part, you want to kind of use the biggest burr you can on the large areas. So these cutter burrs are really nice. I buy the more expensive ones from Dremel, but you might have bought a cheaper one, which would probably work just as well. Now, um, you want to do that kind of area. You want to try and do as much as you can with the bigger one. And then you kind of want to go in with maybe a smaller cutter burr if you've got one. But you can also go in with like, maybe a cuts all fine taper burr and go in here. And then even for the smaller bits, sort of like going in between the teeth, you want to go down to a smaller level even on that. Um, so I will show you how to do those parts next. Okay, so here we go. Uh, now you can sort of see I'm holding the board a little bit of an angle so I can sort of like hold my right hand, the one with the Dremel in, um, sort of horizontal and kind of get a little bit deeper into the wood I guess you would say. And I tend to carve um, with moving the board and a little bit of the Dremel hand as well. You sort of got to decide on how you're going to, well not decide but you sort of come to uh, your own way of carving I guess you would say. And you can sort of see I'm going around and I'm using the top of that burr as well. Uh, it's got cutters on the top. So I'm a bit aware of that as I go around. And I'm not too worried about the finish of the what I'm leaving at the moment. I'm just trying to get sort of like an edge on the actual carving. And you might sort of like go around once and then go around twice. Now I've changed it over to a cheaper cutter burr. You can sort of see it's working pretty well there. Um, and this wood is a little bit sort of uh, a tiny little bit fuzzy but not that bad. Uh, it is Rimu, a New Zealand wood. Okay, so we can see here I've taken uh, it back with uh, one of these and also the Dremel one as well. That one's a cheaper one. Um, I think the cheaper ones don't last as long, but, the, but they're probably just as good as these ones. But I do like the shape of the Dremel one, even though it's a little bit bigger. But on the Dremel ones, you can actually get smaller ones as well. You can sort of get to that level as well. So you could get in with one of those and go on all the details. It's still actually quite hard to get those details going in um, when you've got such a big kind of square bit at the end. So essentially what I do is I just sort of like work with the bits that I've got. So, you know, I might go in with this and I'll try and take out a bit in that mouth area and around here or I might even go in um, to finish off with a diamond burr or maybe some more cutter burrs with a round end on just to get into those details. Uh, yeah, so those kind of things. And also these are quite handy as well. They're the flat um, diamond burrs. And you can sort of get in and sort of like go around things like that. So let's do that. And with carving, it's all about patience really. If you want to do a really good job at something, uh, you can sort of see there I'm going really slow and just going up to that line. Now I'm going to go over that as well with maybe another cutter burr or a diamond burr. And you can sort of see I'm going in the uh, those uh, sort of like spiky bits underneath the mouth. And I'm just sort of like working my way into it very slowly. Uh, carving's all about sort of well, carving for me is all about slowly getting to... It's about the process, I guess I'm trying to say. It's sort of like working out how to get things done the way you kind of want them to be done. And sort of going up to that line. Actually, what I'm using there is a round cutter burr. You can sort of see there I'm using the T-shaped burr to sort of go into a V. Which is very hard to get at sort of that V in between the tongue and the teeth. 
I might take that out there. Now on those T-shaped ones, you can use the top, the side, and the underneath of the burr. Okay, so we're up to this stage. I've kind of got it all roughly kind of going back, the background, and gone around all the detail kind of areas. And now you kind of want to tidy it up, although you can leave the tidying up until later after you put in the details if you wanted to. But um, I'm going to show you now how to tidy up these edges. And also you can sort of round off these parts so they kind of blend into these flatter parts. So let's look at sort of like an area like this. So an area like this, what we want to do is we want to sort of smooth out that and then maybe put a small undercut under there. And so that will look a little bit nicer. You can sort of see I've just started to do it on this one. So that's kind of a quite nice there. And when it comes to the smaller areas, it's a bit harder to get into with um, certain burrs. I would go for maybe a small um, T-burr or um, your tiny little, oh, where did it go? Your tiny little Dremel wheel point one and just go along the edges like that. So I'll just show you how to do that and tidy things up. I'll only do a few to, just to show you, just to demonstrate it. Okay, so let's tidy that edge up. And what I'm using is the top of that T-burr. And I'm trying not to go too far into the carving with the edge because that will leave a big uh, indentation. So you just lightly go over it. And I found that the best method. You might find another method which is cool as well. Now I'm going in from the opposite angle, so I'm trying to put in a undercut underneath the dragon where I just cleaned it up. And again, I'm just using sort of like the top, but I'm letting the edge of the burr sort of sink under the dragon. Now you can do that all around. You might have to change the sort of um, sizes of those T-burrs to get in the real tight bits. And there's lots of ways you can sort of smooth out the carving so it rounds off that part that dips into the dragon. I'm using the Cutsall Taper Burr there. It's quite hard wood, but like if you wanted to, you could just use a mini sander or a... Uh, it depends on the hardness of the wood. You could use just one of those mini sanders that I'm just going to show you shortly, or even a diamond burr. Now this is a, a little sander that I got off... Um, Amazon and it's really good I think I've got about 60 grit on there and I will just tidy it up okay so I bought that off Amazon and that's really good for those kind of outside parts like that and I'll probably do all around there. I might sort of like change to get into a smaller area. I might sort of like use a diamond burr. This one's from Master Carver, a really nice burr. Um, this one's probably quite useful as well. Uh, it's got sort of like an angle there. You could probably go around like that if you don't have those T burrs. Um, now, so what happens if we want to get into this kind of area here? Obviously, this is too big. Now, I've got these T burrs um, that I was using before. They come in all different sizes. So, you know, you're going to use a real small one to get in between the teeth and to get in between those teeth there. And maybe a um, bigger one for this area. This is the biggest one there. And you could go around in here like this a little bit. Maybe actually swap down to a smaller size. And sort of just work these areas. Now if you don't have any of those kind of burrs, you could use uh, something like this. And just try and smooth it out as best you can. Or a lot of people have um, kind of round, uh, cheap burrs. Probably smaller than this one. I've got another one here. Yeah, these are from a cheap pack. They don't, they work pretty good. Uh, you've got to keep them moving uh, quite fast or so they'll leave indentations. But you know, we've got to not strive for perfection when we're doing these kind of carvings. I like the idea of these are old, old carvings. 
from the Viking era and they need to be a little bit rough, you know, and that's what I like about these carvings. Um, they kind of look better if they're not perfect. They look better and more genuine if they've got um, those imperfections. tidied things up. We haven't done it completely but then again what we're going to do is we're going to put a texture on this background at the end and so even if there's rough parts that will probably be lost because it'll be taken up by the texture so don't worry too much about that uh, but we've got some nice kind of undercuts on, on here, under here I should say. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to put in details. So you've got to have a think about these details and you've got to look at the kind of width of your Dremel uh, bit that you're going to use. I'm going to use, we can keep it pretty simple today, I'm going to use the Dremel wheel point burr and just uh, go along here. Now I might not follow, follow the line but I'll follow sort of, I'll follow it but I might not stick to the line if you get what I mean. I might come on this side just to stay away from that mouth and then I will put the eye in because the eye is very important and then put the eyebrow in and carry on. So I might be maybe moving these lines a little bit depending on how thick these lines end up being. And with this line as it comes around here the tail actually goes underneath the body. So what we could do is bring that tail down a little bit so it looks like it's submerging under that body. And for me, I find stabilizing my Dremel hand with the other hand when I'm carving sort of like on lines and details, that's a good way to go. It just sort of like gives you a little bit more control. So I'm sort of going back and forth over this. You might find one way of going easier than the other way. And I'm using one of those inverted cone burrs there to cut the eye. Just want to leave a kind of sharp line around the actual outside of the eye and sort of like round off the internal part of the eye if you get what I mean. That seems to work quite well. And the good thing about those inverted cone burrs is they come in lots of different sizes so you can sort of like adjust to what you need. And I'm just sort of like using the end of the burr to put in a bit of a pupil there. Now let's get on to the sort of like tail slash tongue. Now I'm just cutting a groove in there on, on the other side and then I'm going to lower them down so it looks like it's going under the body if you get what I mean. It just sort of makes it, it's not 100% realistic of course but it sort of gives it that kind of general look that it's going under the actual body. And I just am using one of those T-shaped burrs. They come in so handy, those things. Right, and then, uh, now I'm going to put in sort of like that line that goes around the body. So I'm sort of using another one of those inverted cone burrs. But I'm getting some real good depth with these T-shaped burrs as well. And the great thing about these T-shaped burrs is they're really, really fine. Now I'm going to put in a link to a video on how to carve dragon scales but um, I'll just quickly show you what I'm doing here and I'm using these burrs to carve it. Those are, are from Dremel as well. It's really hard to work out how to do it to start off with. I get confused at the start as well so don't worry about that. 
sort of like you put in a V and then you make another V at the so those sort of goes into diamonds if you get what I mean but yeah so follow that link to how to carve those but what's important on sort of like carving those scales is they follow around the actual body and that's why I've drawn in those sort of like red marks just to remind myself that they're going to follow around and not just go sort of the same way now I didn't end up using that 125 cutter bear just because it was a little bit bigger than the other one and these are quite small scales so I'm just using this burr here. And in the description I have got affiliate links to um, as many of the burrs that I can find affiliate links to uh, and also there's the cutsaw ones in there as well if you follow that you actually get a 5% discount which doesn't sound much but it's nice that you um, do it because it kind of helps me out <laughs> in the channel because these uh, videos are very they take a long time to put together so and I'm doing this one quite sort of maybe a little bit different and the fact that I'm leaving things run a little bit more because I really want you to see that um, things like this don't take just 10 minutes or something to do they take a long time and uh, carving isn't about sort of like a, a five minute thing that you see on uh, shorts or anything like that it's more about taking your time and being proud of what you're doing you know just uh, having fun and learning and all of those kind of things. And I usually finish my carving off by giving it a light sand. I think I got three, 320 there or could be 400. And try and sort of like get those round lines on the outside. Just get your finger in there and um, yeah. It sort of like uh, evens it out as well a little bit, the sanding and takes the furry bits off. Now I've, I've drawn a pattern on the back, it's sort of like a crisscross. And I will leave a link to the video on how to do this pattern. But essentially it's like a checkerboard, you're going one way and then the other way on those uh, areas. And the idea is to sort of like make these lines so they hold either the black wax that I use or maybe you could use paint and then sand it back. Uh, you kind of got to experiment. I'm not great on painting, but uh, yeah, so I use those uh, waxes and dyes as well as you will see. <laughs> now, I missed the next part where I forgot to film. I added on a dark dye, um, and that color was Georgian mahogany, and then I sanded it back so the dragon came out again. Now, you can always sand back more depending on sort of like how much you want to lighten things up and you can do that right at the end and just repeat the wax over the top so you can sort of see me applying the wax there and I'm sort of like getting it into all the grooves and that sort of like has two kind of aspects it kind of protects the wood but also it leaves a nice shine and um, yeah it looks really good as well when it's sort of finished it's got that kind of like antique kind of look to it and even at this stage, like once you've applied the wax, you could get some sandpaper and take little bits back if you want to.